I have Professor McMillan here, if, if you're ready to speak with him. Absolutely, very much so. Thank you. Hello. Hello. This is Adam Smith from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize. Hi, Adam. Hi. Uh, many, many congratulations on the award. Thank you so much. Did you actually get the call from Stockholm? I uh, no, I didn't. I got a text from someone in Stockholm that uh, where my name was wrong, and 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 I assumed it was a prank call. I've had a lot of mischievous ex coworkers over the years, so I just assumed it was one of them having a, a prank. So I I actually just went back to sleep. <laughs> And when did the news actually reach you? Well, the news reached me because um, after I actually the, the other winner, Ben List, also was trying to contact me. I contacted him. He told me what was happening. And I said I actually didn't believe him, too. I thought maybe the same person was pranking him. So I, I basically bet him $1,000 <laughs> that this was not happening. I went back to sleep and then woke up with my phone going crazy and I was a thousand dollars down, but a very happy person. <laughs> yeah, cheap at the price, perhaps. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> when we spoke to um, Ben List, he was in a cafe with his wife Sabina in uh, on holiday. So um, it, it's it's reached you in strange ways. This news. Yeah, no, it certainly did. And uh, but you know, it's obviously for for anyone, it's it's extraordinarily welcome news. And you know, I'm incredibly. Still trying to handle it. I'm sure you talk to a lot of people in this position, and you get the same response. It's just it's hard to sort of get your feet underneath you to a certain extent. You're just trying to take it all in. Mm. I guess the day carries you along a little bit. It must have been already quite a whirlwind. Yeah, I mean, the very first moment I came out my driveway, and there was press at the bottom of the driveway, which was doesn't usually happen to me on a Wednesday <laughs> morning. I would say, and uh, then when I got to work, there was press in the parking lot there too. So that was unique. Um, and it's just been a sort of whirlwind ever since. But what's wonderful is we have these fantastic people sitting beside me, uh, the communication folks at, at Princeton who are just dab, dab, top of the top of the top range professionals at dealing with this kind of stuff. So they're they're keeping me in check, which is good. Yeah, they shepherd you about, and I guess you're yes. I, I gather you're within the kind of confines of your department now, so relatively safe. And you, I spoke to your assistant earlier, and she said you were doing an interview with your group. Yeah, we were, well, it wasn't really an interview. It was a group meeting. We we have group meeting every morning at nine o'clock, and I thought, you know, for a little bit of sanity, I would still have a group meeting, um, which was good. And so we just talked about science for an hour, which was kind of fun, and it was a very, as you can imagine, happy celebratory mood. And they 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 sort of showed up uh, with champagne and cakes. How they got champagne, I don't know, because you can't buy alcohol in Princeton until ten in the morning. But somehow they found champagne. So I'm not quite sure how they did that. But uh, but it was yeah it was a it was a very good very good meeting. Maybe they knew more than you did and knew that this was or suspected this was <laughs> on the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's one of the things about research groups. They're they're incredibly good at sort of solving problems at short notice, and they, they, once again they they came through. Well, I did want to ask you about that because the inventiveness of all this is just extraordinary, and it's you know it, the what you've been awarded for the asymmetric organocatalysis, and then adding on to that, photo redox catalysis. Where do all these ideas come from? Um, I don't know. Um, that's a terrible answer. I realise, and everyone wants a nice, uh, straightforward answer. I think everyone, uh, all scientists, have these kind of wacky ideas along the way, and some of them work, and some of them don't work, and this was one that, you know, came and was successful and went forward. And, you know, and again, it, it sounds sort of obvious to say we were lucky, but we were lucky. You know, there's, there's m way more re way more ideas fail than ever succeed. And this was one that, you know, we were very excited about at the beginning. We thought it had a very low probability of success, but it took off and it took off like gangbusters. And that was that was sort of wonderful to see. Mm. Mm. Yes, I suppose it's slightly a case of gambling on some risky ideas and seeing whether they come to fruition. Yeah, no, I think that part is right. I think you have to gamble. Um, you know, that I think that's why scientists, in my opinion, have the greatest job in the world, because we get to show up every day. We get to take these sort of risks and we get to try and work on things that should never work. And if you think about it, it's the stuff that should never work is where all the good stuff is. Because uh, there's always, well, knowledge is incredibly important. Um, there's always parts of knowledge which are overstated or, or underappreciated too. And so there's definitely things that people believe would never work. 
to have a fantastic chance of, of getting there. And I think, honestly, I'm one of those people, there's many like me, who think we've just scratched the surface on that kind of way of, of thinking. Mm, mm, mm. Well, certainly on the diversity of organic molecules to be built, we've just scratched the surface. There's a whole universe to explore. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, that's one of the things which is, you know, one of the most exciting parts, I think, you know, when talking to an incoming undergraduate, even or a first year about the fact the very first day they build a molecule that's never been made in the universe before. And you explain that to them and they get so excited about the fact that they've just done that. And you don't sort of realize how open the whole field is and the whole science is towards doing new things. And, and I think that's what that's what keeps that's what keeps chemistry and science moving forward. Well, that's nice to finish on a kind of recruitment drive for chemistry. I'm sure that people, <laughs> people will be converted. Um, I hope we'll talk about all this more at greater length in the future, but I should let you get on with this day. And I guess people will be left wondering whether uh, Ben List is going to collect on his $1,000. <laughs> oh, I, I would be the happiest person in the world to hand, hand Ben the cheque for $1,000. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, glad he, I'm glad he won that bet. <laughs> Excellent. Lovely. Thank you very much for speaking to us and wishing you a fantastic day. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Adam. If you enjoyed this moment, you might also like this special edition of the Nobel Prize Conversations podcast. Adam Smith takes a turn as guest and recalls his favourite moments from these very special calls. 